the beginning of the bulletin. Um, Pat, will you lead us, please? Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world. If I say, surely the darkness will cover me and the light around me, turn to night. Darkness is not dark to you, O Lord. The night is as bright as the day. Darkness and light to you are both alike. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. You may be seated. Let us pray together. O oh, gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living God, O oh, Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O oh God, Creator, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. Let us say together the psalm. Out of the depths, I, I cry, cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let, Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who can stand? But there is forgiveness with you, so that you may be revered. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord, more than those who watch for the morning, more than those who watch for the morning. 
O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is great power to redeem. It is he who will redeem Israel from all its iniquities. Please stand for the gradual in the blue hymnal number 625, the king of love, my shepherd is. 645, excuse me. The Gospel according to John. The truth of the matter is, 
Whoever doesn't enter the sheepfold through the gate but climbs in some other way is a thief and a robber. The one who enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep, the one for whom the keeper opens the gate. The sheep know the shepherd's voice. The shepherd calls them by name and leads them out. Having led them all out of the fold, the shepherd walks in front of them and they follow because they recognize the shepherd's voice. They simply won't follow strangers. They'll flee from them because they don't recognize the voice of the strangers. Even though Jesus used this metaphor with them, they didn't grasp what he was trying to tell them. He therefore said to them again, the truth of the matter is, I am the sheep gate. All who come before me were thieves and marauders whom the sheep didn't heed. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be safe. You'll go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and slaughter and to destroy. I came to you that you might have life and have it to the full. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd would die for the sheep. The hired hand, who is neither shepherd nor the owner of the sheep, catches sight of the wolf coming and runs away, leaving the sheep to be scattered or snatched by the wolf. That's because the hired hand works only for pay and has no concern for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. In the same way, Abba God knows me and I know God. For these sheep, I will lay down my life. I have other sheep that don't belong to this fold. I must lead them too and they will hear my voice. And then there will be one flock, one shepherd. This is why Abba God loves me, because I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes my life from me. I lay it down freely. I have the power to lay it down, and I have the power to take it up again. The command I received is from my Abba. Please be seated. Today's scripture passage from the Gospel according to John presents this beautiful, familiar image of Jesus as a shepherd. And many of us have a particular picture in our minds when we read this passage. Perhaps it's because of our exposure over many years to various paintings of this scene. Or maybe it's because of our own experience with animals. Many of us know what it's like to watch a newborn animal or growing animals, to feed animals and to care for them even when they're sick. We know what it's like to lose an animal that has become very dear to us and we grieve for them. We humans have a real connection to our animals. Since ancient times, women and men have been portrayed in paintings and in sculpture, carrying a sheep on the shoulder or cradled in the arms. And this passage that I just read from John's Gospel portrays Jesus as the shepherd of the sheep. And it offers us this concrete picture and a set of characteristics that we all recognize. Now this very portrayal of Jesus was really helpful to the early Christians too. And in this story that we just read, the hired hands who are 
irresponsible shepherds are contrasted with a divine model of shepherding and care. This contrast spoke to the early Christians, and they were the audience for John's gospel. This was 70 years after the death of Jesus. This divine model of a shepherd was familiar to these early Christians, and they would have been exposed to it in the Hebrew scriptures and in their own Jewish tradition. So the authors of John's gospel knew that this was their original or their intended audience, and the audience understood the references to the divine shepherd and the image would hit close to home. Since many of the followers of Jesus actually were shepherds, or they had animals near where they live. So these followers of Jesus had up close and personal experiences with sheep and goats and lambs. They understood how they moved around, how they could move along a path, down a road, from a pen into a field. They used the wool and the milk from them. And yes, they eventually ate the animals. These early Christians were familiar with the ways of sheep and goats and lambs. They knew the difference between an irresponsible shepherd and a shepherd who showed concern for the animals. These early Christians understood the serious implications of disregarding the safety of their animals. They recognized how much damage could be done from leading astray those in their care. So I'm spending a little time this evening on the experiences of these early Christians, on the original audience for John's gospel, because they could easily connect the dots. The image of the good shepherd was really familiar to them. In the ancient Hebrew texts, God is portrayed as a shepherd. In the Torah, Rachel is portrayed as a shepherd who cares deeply about her sheep. David is portrayed as a shepherd who cares for his sheep. And so these early Christians knew the stories and the traditions of their ancestors, which involved modeling care and protection and leadership in images that were most familiar to them. And so over the generations, Christians have learned that the symbol of the Good Shepherd is the symbol of devotion. It's the symbol of love. It's the symbol of the way we show kindness. And within faith communities, over time, Christians have learned to recognize the behaviors and the characteristics associated with caring. Now we read this story of the Good Shepherd this evening because it continues to resonate with all of us. And like our ancestors, we all want to offer the next generations a model of care and concern 
that will give them the spiritual tools they need to care for one another and to care for all of God's creatures and to care for this earth, our island home. During this Lenten season in our Ecumenical Wednesday services, we're reading from John's Gospel because it's a very forward-oriented text for its day. Several of the scriptures are selected to become part of this lectionary that we and many other churches have been reading during Lent. This is a communal experience. And it enables us to reach back into history and then to look forward into the generations to come and think about the impact of our tradition on those future generations. This is the story of the church. This is what the church is all about. We gather here together tonight, a people of tradition and hope in the future. We yearn for a more loving and caring community. We want a world that is better for our children. We pray for renewal in our own lives. And we're not alone. We can learn from our spiritual ancestors who continue to point us to the timeless divine model of care and concern for others. This model of concern for the world is not limited to the physical traits that we see in those old familiar paintings of the Good Shepherd. The power of God to give us imagination is so much greater than we can picture. We find in Jesus, the good shepherd, the model of love that makes us one body. We find in Jesus hope in unity we find in Jesus peace in knowing that we all are loved. We find in Jesus the strength and the courage to love those we are called to love. Let us share what we have found with our families and with our friends and with the next generations by showing the world that we deeply care we teach each other what it looks like to be a Christian Amen Please rise, we'll sing verse one of Go to Dark Gethsemane.
And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the thine kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The prayers of the people. We pray that this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful. We entreat you, O Lord, that your holy angels may lead us in paths of peace and goodwill. We entreat you, O Lord, that we may be pardoned and forgiven for our sins and offenses. We entreat you, O Lord, that there may be peace to your church and to the whole world. We entreat you, O Lord, that we may depart this life in your faith and not be condemned before the great judgment seat of Christ. We entreat you, O Lord, that we may be bound together by your Holy Spirit, entrusting one another and all our life to Christ. We entreat you, O Lord. O oh God, whose glory it is always to have mercy, be gracious to all who have gone astray from your ways and bring them again with penitent hearts and steadfast faith to embrace and hold fast the unchangeable truth of your word, Jesus Christ, your Son, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of Christ be always with you. Let us greet one another. Yeah, exactly. Peace. 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 Actually, just stand, or you can stand right here. I'm just going to. Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, just stand here for just a second. Let me introduce you. <laughs> you may be seated. <laughs> I just want to introduce my colleagues. 
Um, this is such a pleasure to have these ecumenical services. Uh, we have been traveling with each other for the last couple of Wednesdays, and it's been just a real joy. Um, Cheryl Weaver is, uh, Reverend Cheryl Weaver is the, uh, the pastor at the First United Methodist Church, and Reverend Loretta Mendoza is the pastoral associate here at St. Aidan's Episcopal Church. Uh, and I'm Esther Kramer, and I'm the priest here at St. Aidan's Episcopal Church. It's so good to have all of you here, um, and I, I think you are probably seeing familiar faces now, right? As you've been through a couple of Sundays, and uh, many of us have traveled together on these Sundays to each of these churches. If Sundays. <laughs> I'm already thinking about Sunday. We could do Sundays. Yeah, we could do Sundays. That might be fun. <laughs> Wednesdays are good, too and it's been terrific. So uh, we each will go off onto our own Holy Week soon, but we have one more, um, one more service next Wednesday, and then, uh, and then we have lots of services um, at the First United Methodist Church, and of course, St. Killian Catholic Church and Redeemer, uh, excuse me, yes, Redeemer <laughs> Lutheran Church. Um, and I would encourage you all to participate in those services as well. Thank you for coming. Let us pray together. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night, and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ, give rest to the weary, bless the dying, soothe the suffering, pity the afflicted, shield the joyous, and all for your love's sake. Amen. Let us pray together. Almighty God, God you have, have given us grace at this time with, with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Be to God. Please rise. Amen. 